Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife Journal Club on Landmark Papers and Surgery. I'm Madhuri Nagraj, a general surgery resident from UT Southwestern, and I will be reviewing the JAMA surgery article, Arteriovenous Fistula Maturation, Functional Patency, and Intervention Rates, published in 2021. Many people are affected by chronic kidney disease, with hypertension and diabetes being the greatest risk factors. Nearly 800,000 people have end-stage renal disease, and 71% are on dialysis. Thus, creating and maintaining dialysis access is hugely important. The Kudoki guidelines for hemodialysis access began in 1995 with recommendations of autogenous fistulas over grafts or tunneled catheters. The National Access Vascular Initiative then raised the goal prevalence to 66%. However, with this heightened emphasis on ABFs for hemodialysis access, surgeons also had to deal with the complications, such as non-maturation of the fistulas. Thus, in 2010, the NIH's HFM consortium began a study to evaluate fistula maturation rates among seven institutions and 602 patients. The present case series analysis aimed to examine ABF maturation, long-term patency, and interventions needed to assist maturation, manage complications, or maintain patency in the HFM cohort. The data set was from a prospective multi-center trial of all single-stage AVFs, measuring unassisted AVF maturation as the primary outcome. Of note, all institutions were allowed independent clinical management, but interventions within six weeks were discouraged. This study follows case series reporting guidelines. Patients were monitored for a median 26 months for the primary outcome of maturation which was defined as effective dialysis use within nine months of creation or eight weeks of attempted use. Unassisted maturation meant no therapeutic interventions were required and abandoned access were those deemed unsuitable for use. A total of 602 participants were enrolled of which 37% had CKD and the remaining 63% had ESRD. Participants were stratified by their enrollment dialysis status as it could affect access choices due to urgency. 67 patients had uncertain maturation rates for reasons such as failure to progress, to dialysis, death, or loss to follow-up. Of the included cohort, 70% were male with a mean age of 54.6 years with an even racial distribution between black and white participants. 58% had diabetes and 14% peripheral arterial disease. Approximately 80% had an active or previous dialysis access. This cohort also had 63% upper arm fistula created and 35% forearm. Graphs A and B display the AVF maturation rates for the ESRD versus CKD patients, which was 76% versus 58% at 12 months respectively. 38% of patients with ESRD and 35% with CKD required interventions to facilitate maturation or manage complications. The median time from access creation to maturation was 115 days, with 105 for ESRD and 170 for CKD. Of note, maturation in the CKD group is expectedly delayed as maturation was defined as attempted access for dialysis, which would obviously occur later in the CKD group. Regarding patency, there were no differences between CKD or ESRD patients and those requiring interventions versus unassisted maturation. Estimated patency for all patients then was 87% at one year and 75% at two years. Importantly, almost half required an intervention to maintain patency, which was most frequently AVF stenosis in 40% of patients followed by central venous stenosis at 15% and thrombosis at 13%. The authors recognized some limitations. Firstly, that the investigators were primarily interested in ABF creation, maturation, and patency, and may have liberalized criteria for enrollment for that purpose. Additionally, only single stage fistulas were included and 67 patients had undetermined maturation rates. The take home messages are that ABF have a 58 to 76% rate of maturation at two years, depending on the underlying diagnosis. They have a 75% patency rate at two years, and these data are both consistent with multiple other published reports. 
It is important to note that one third required interventions for complications or to facilitate maturation, and one half required interventions to maintain patency, most frequently for AVF or central venous stenosis. Thus, the authors conclude that AVF are acceptable forms of hemodialysis, but require multiple interventions for which the cost and emotional toll on a patient cannot be underestimated. This was Madhuri Nagraj again. Thank you for listening and feel free to email me with any questions or comments. Please check out the This Week in SCORE modules on dialysis access that are listed here. Thank you.